Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you, Professor, for your kind introduction. What I will do over the next uh, 20 minutes or so is to give you a little overview about aviation globally, aviation growth in India, and then move to aerospace development, specifically in India, and how Airbus has been contributing to this development as well. So Airbus journey with India started 40 years ago with the development, uh, with the delivery of the first aircraft A300 with the then Indian Airlines and from then on we've been extremely successful with the private airlines in the country. So if you step back, you know, in terms of the global aviation traffic, every 15 years air traffic doubles. Whatever the crisis we have gone through, if you go back from 1970s till now, every 15 years the air traffic has doubled and we expect the same to happen over the next 15 years. And as per the Airbus global market forecast, over the next 20 years, the world traffic will grow at a rate of 4.5%. Keep that percentage in your mind. I'll compare that with the emerging economies like India in the future. So if you look at it, you know, the air traffic, the center of gravity of the global aviation is moving towards east. I mean, that's nothing that surprising. In 1970s, it was in the Americas, 1990s in Europe, 2000 Middle East, and in the next 20 years, the center of gravity is going to be in Asia Pacific. But what is important to note is that wherever there is an aviation growth, those countries and regions also want to grow in aerospace. And that's where I think it's interesting for aerospace companies like us in Airbus, how do we take benefit of it and also help achieve those goals as well. So coming back, if you look at it, in, in, uh, as I said, Asia Pacific is growing to grow in the next 20 years and nearly 36% of the revenue passenger kilometer, by that I mean passengers who pay for their tickets, the number of kilometers they travel, that's the RP case. I mean, nearly 35 plus percent is going to come from the Asia Pacific region and Asia Pacific itself is growing to grow over the next 20 years at 5.7%, considering the world average at 4.5%. So if you look at uh, you know, the, where the people are traveling, Europeans and Americans, they fly most today. I mean, not surprising. Uh, and if you look at the per capita, they travel more than one trip per year. In China, it's still less than one trip per year. And in India, it's much, much lower as well. But over the next 20 years, this is going to change significantly and India will become where China is today and China will grow much further and there will be at least minimum quadruple the number of trips. And again, if we see that India is starting with a very low you know, per capita trip, but that's going to increase significantly over the next 20 years. But coming back to the traffic itself, as I mentioned, the world traffic is growing at 4.5. India domestic, as per the Airbus global market forecast, is expected to grow at 9.7 over the next 20 years. And Professor was saying 7.5 over, I think, the next, I think, probably a little longer period. And here we see if you take domestic and also the origin and destination to the outside world, it'll, India will grow at 8.2. So whatever give and take a few percentages here, I mean, really there's going to be a significant growth in India. So India has all the right ingredients, but the policies needs to be right to grow the infrastructure and to have the necessary people to make these percentages happen. So looking at it, and if you look at the regional trans uh, tra uh, traffic, I'm not talking about regional within India, but with the neighboring countries, we all know that I think there is a lot of traffic to the Middle East, and that's going to grow significantly over the next uh, 20 years as well. Other one, South Africa, not, not because of all the cricket winnings we have in the last few, a few weeks, but South Africa is really a big traffic as well, right from the Gandhi days, and it's been in a, in a lot of traffic between India and South Africa. That's going to grow as well. But if you look, look at China, uh, over the next 20 years, the, the percentage traffic is going to be high. That's because the volume we start there is very low at this point in time. It'll grow at 10%. So there's going to be a lot of potential for growth. Coming back to India itself, what has happened over the last three years, India domestic has grown at 20%. That's phenomenal, you know, over the last uh, three years. And if you speak to the ministries of civil aviation, they would like to keep this percentage over the next 10 years. That will be challenging. You know, we need to really grow the airports. We need to really have the pilots, the mechanics, and so forth, all the ecosystem of aviation to support such a growth in, in, in India itself. So if you look at the domestic India traffic uh, in terms of uh, the growth over the next 20 years, if you look at it differently, 
and it's going to grow five-fold in terms of the revenue passenger kilometers. That's going to be, this is in billions of revenue passenger kilometer. That's again, it's going to be tremendous, and that's where the policies of the government in terms of the Udan regional scheme is going to really help accelerate this growth and keep it at the level you know, what we are predicting. So with that, over the next 20 years, Airbus global market forecast is that India would need 1,700 new aircraft. You know, where the main, predominantly it's passenger aircraft. That's uh, more than what we have today. So if you look at today's uh, position, and 100-seater uh, plus, you know, it's predominantly between the A and the B company. We share that. And uh, you know, in service, you know, uh, over about 500 aircraft are there. And if you look at the order, it's about 540 backlog from Airbus. And we have a fleet share, and sorry, an order share of about 70%. That's including the fleet and the backlog itself. That's tremendous. You know, at Airbus, I'm proud to say, on an average over the next 10 years, we'll be delivering one aircraft every week into the country. So that's a great backlog to have, and that's going to definitely increase going into the future. So if you look at Delhi, uh, as we saw, Delhi is one of the busiest airports in, in India, and Delhi is also the busiest A320 airport worldwide. So that's today, and you can imagine how that's going to grow. So if you look at the bigger aircraft of that family, A321, you know, with the A321 Neo range of 4,000 nautical miles, take Delhi, do a circle, and two-thirds of the world's population live there. So India is predominantly a single ale market, so we can uh, reach that. But again, there are more and more you know, opportunities for the Indian carriers with the wide bodies to go to Europe and further beyond Europe as well. So that gives you a quick view about the aviation landscape and how India is poised to grow. What I will do over the next uh, few minutes is really spend a look at aerospace ecosystem in India in how that's been developing. So I'll take you back you know, in time when we started looking at India. You know, we started at about 25, 30 years ago. At that time, we looked at Indian companies, you know, which companies we can par partner with for developing you know, uh, parts or assemblies. We looked around and it was HAL, HAL, and HAL. You know, there's nothing around at that time. And then, okay, we started with HAL doing our doors. And then we started about 10, 12 years ago, looking at India much more closely and seriously to say, how do we really partner with the private companies? Because some of the private players, they came to us and with their PowerPoint slides to say, hey, we want to do parts, we want to do assemblies, can we make money in three, three, three years? You know, that sort of attitude. It was good because some of them were really passionate, but some of them, you know, were looking at it saying that's going to be huge offsets, let's jump into it. So when we looked at, you know, uh, this engineering and manufacturing companies, now I'm going to give a little bit of a theory here. If you look at the green line, you know, that's how generally in Europe the, the suppliers developed. That they started with manufacturing, went up the manufacturing chain, and then they started moving up the value chain on the design side. So that took about 25 years you know, to develop the ecosystem in Europe. Sometimes what happens, there are specialist engineering companies who move up the design value chain. That's the one on the red, you know, you can see. They move up that curve and then they just stay there. And sometimes they move from design into manufacturing at the end so that they can do design and manufacturing as such. So when, it, when we looked at India, there were companies who were coming from automotive industry who wanted to start developing parts and assemblies. And some of them, we've been working the last 10 years. They started as tier two suppliers for us, like Dynamatics, who developed the flat track beams for us as a tier two supplier. And slowly, they moved up the manufacturing chain, and they become tier one and global single source supplier for us as well. So that's a journey with certain suppliers which we are taking, moving up the manufacturing value chain. But what is more interesting is, as well as that, a lot of IT services company in India, they really wanted to get into the aerospace engineering, and they call sometimes aerospace design. But aerospace design from an OEM point of view is completely different to what we were looking at from an engineering service point of view. Because when our guys came here to look at design, what they wanted is, do you have a design organization? Do you have an architecture? Do you have people who have integrated in quality? Okay, so what basically from an IT services is that today they work in automotive, 
tomorrow they move into aerospace, and if there is a low period, the guys move into nuclear, for example. So they were engineering people who are working in design and predominantly in analysis of areas. So with some of these suppliers, we went through the journey to really set up design organizations so that they can work with us very closely. So what Airbus is looking for in India is to have a mature design and build partner, those who can do design and build in one roof. And today, I don't think there are many players who have the aspirations to reach there, but some of them are going in that particular journey and we are really working with them so that they can actually reach there. So we can do major component assemblies, both design and build in the country. So what we have done as Airbus so far, especially in the last 10 to 12 years, we've been working with many companies, we've set up our own facilities. So in the next few minutes, I'll explain to you what our journey has been. So the Airbus strategy in India has been based across the product life cycle. We have the four pillars of our strategy, starting with engineering, you know, which includes information management as well, servicing our customers, how do we support our customers, and the aviation in, in general, and the partnerships we have been having with aerospace companies in the country, and above all, R&T and innovation, which cuts across all these pillars as well. So for Airbus, Make in India is at the heart of our strategy. What do we mean by that? That we are really committed to supporting the growth in aviation and aerospace ecosystem in the country. So I'll just go uh, and into each one of these areas, give you a little background of what we are doing. Engineering, 10 years ago, 12 years ago, when we came, we said India produces a lot of engineers. They're very good at maths and physics. They may not have in uh, you know, aerospace experience because every engineering services company where you know, we always found there was a somebody, one or two people for HAL and the team was built around it. You know, that's how it all started. So we said, we are going to recruit people who will start working on specific areas for Airbus and then develop them. That's what we have done. We have our own internal people, about 400 people in our Bangalore facility. We have another 200 who work with us in that facility itself. But beyond that, what we did about six, seven years ago uh, is that we looked at suppliers, partners, and then we had a special relationship with them so that they designed and developed the dedicated centers for us. And between the two suppliers, Axis Cadders work for us on fuselage and Quest on wing. We have about 1,000 people. So overall, on engineering services from India, we have a little over about 2,000 people working for Airbus, which is the largest outside of Europe working for Airbus, you know, uh, is from India, actually. So if you look at engineering itself, um, the focus for Airbus in India in the Bangalore Center is on design, simulation, modeling. We not only work for Airbus in our commercial aircraft, we also work for helicopters and the defense area as well. And this is actually growing in, a, in the year, and it will grow in the years to come as well. So the next focus area for us, the second pillar, is on the services. I'll talk about only two areas here. We here, what we are doing is we are offering services to the airlines so that they can manage the fleet, the fleet technical management, as well as really supporting on their maintenance as well in terms of the parts maintenance. And on the other side, we also are working on skilling people in terms of the technicians as well as the pilots in the country as well. So if you look at on the first aspect, what we call as the tailored support program, which is really supporting the airlines. We're supporting Vistara, one of the airlines in the country. In the last three years, we have been helping them on managing the fleet as well as in the parts management, and we help them to achieve a technical dispatch reliability of 99.9%, .9%, very high anywhere in the world for a single ale and a program as well. Apart from the maintenance uh, in a training we have in Bangalore, we have trained about 3,000 plus maintenance technicians you know, from that facility. We are setting up a pilot training center in Delhi. This will have you know, our four simulators to start with, and then that can grow to about eight simulators, so we can train up to 8,000 pilots a year you know, uh, starting next year. So the next third pillar for our partnership in India is the aerospace partnerships. I talked about it. Here, we've been working with more than 50 companies around, I mean, uh, across India. So I've given, I mean, here, this shows some of the examples here. 
every time I make this presentation, at the end of the presentation, somebody from the audience says that, hey, we work for Airbus, my name is not there. But this is just not an exhaustive list, please. But here, just to show some examples, HAL, yes, Dynamatic, they work on flat track beams. UTAS, here from Bangalore, they work on lighting systems for us. Evacuation slides, they do a lot for us from Bangalore facility. You have Mahindras, the Tata Group, and on manufacturing. But on the information management side, we have the big guys, the Infosys, the Scient, Geometric, and others. They work for us on the design as well of the information management system. Then engineering suppliers work for us as well, you know, from, from India. So if you look at, in the last 10 years, we have grown significantly in terms of our partnership and our sourcing volume. You know, we've grown 16 times, and today, on an annual basis, we procure a little over you know, half a million dollars from India uh, you know, in terms of the uh, uh, sourcing. The last but not least in terms of our fourth pillars uh, is R&T and innovation that really cuts across uh, you know, all the other uh, you know, pillars as well. So in terms of R&T and innovation, as part of the digitalization in office we have, we focus on emerging technologies, and we also have something called the Airbus Biz Lab. You know, we'll talk about it as well. So R&T, our focus in India is on scouting, and you know, that is in, uh, looking at the uh, new technologies around the world, and also really how do we manage that knowledge. In terms of the emerging technologies, we work in areas like blockchain, machine learning, AI, really to uh, develop these areas and how to take benefit of that as well. So in Bangalore, we have set up things like the data analytics accelerator here, you know, and we are working on areas like connectivity in terms of in-flight connectivity as well as ground-to-flight connectivity as well. And Skywise is our global platform for the customers, which is based on big data and the analysis and how we can provide services to improve the performance and the maintenance of aircraft with the services as well for the customers. What we also have in our facility is a prototype, it was a proto space, which really uh, explores new way of working, and also it's really to work with our suppliers so that we can really bring solutions quickly into the market as well. So Airbus BizLab, this is the first aerospace accelerator in India, which we have set up in Bangalore, and you'll, you'll hear more about that during the startup session uh, later this afternoon. Here we bring both the entrepreneurs, the startups, as well as entrepreneurs from our own company to bring them so that they can actually take their ideas to fruition into successful business in an accelerated way. So apart from that, we do have Airbus University partnerships. Uh, the professor talked about you know, the partnership between IAM Bangalore and Toulouse Business School, and I'm proud to say that Airbus was uh, in instrumental in facilitating this partnership at the beginning, uh, and this is the first recognized aerospace MBA in the country, and you've done a great job. I really like to congratulate you for the wonderful job you guys have done. And this MBA is not just for the airlines, it's also for the people who are working in the industry, especially the government who can make policies as well, and people who are in aerospace industry, whether they are in manufacturing or in the logistics. So it's a very generic course where you can specialize in whichever area you want. And it's been extremely successful. We've been in the last two batches having more than 70 people. And uh, we find that a lot of the people are getting good positions and some of them joining Airbus as well. Apart from that, we do have a lot of university partnerships. And you'll hear that during the managing talent from our head of HR as well, how we really have this partnership to really manage the talent in this industry as well. So just to summarize how we have been supporting the aviation and aerospace industry in the country, you know, making India is really at the heart of our strategy. And as I said earlier, on an average, we'll be delivering one aircraft every week over the next 10 years on an average. Every Airbus aircraft, I'm proud to say, is partly made in India, which is coming out of the assembly line. So either a part or an assembly comes from India in that. We've created more than 6,000 jobs in the uh, supply chain, uh, you know, working for uh, Airbus. And as I said, over $550 million is our annual sourcing volume from India. That's how we've been supporting to help develop the aviation aerospace ecosystem in the country. Thank you very much.